Welcome everybody and thank you to Francis Harvey. We are recording the fourth video in the series that I've created around cultivating a mindset for success. So you may not know it, but without a mindset for success, you're not going to become successful. So we've had interviews with three people who have helped us understand how mindset has benefited them and understanding how you cultivate a mindset. And we're going to continue that conversation today with Francis. So if you think that you don't need mindset or mindset is not something you need to worry about, I'm here to tell you you're wrong. And if you've ever read any personal development about success or achieving your goals, you'll understand that most of those writers, those experts, those authorities will come back to, you've got to get your head straight. And if you haven't got your head straight, no amount of doing stuff is actually going to propel you forward. So I'm hoping we're going to tease some of that out today because Frances has got an amazing story. She's built an incredible business and I'm really excited to share with you what I've grown to know and love about Frances. So Frances, tell us who you are and who you serve. Hi Joe. well thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here and my name is Francis and I am the founder, owner, CEO, president, all around kind of Friday gal, whatever you want to call me, um, of My Solution Services Inc. And what we do is we um, specialize in online business management for mental health clinicians and um, so my ideal person that I serve is therapists. Fantastic. Now, we've had this discussion many, many times, but let's just go it over it again. What's an online okay. business manager, Francis? <laughs> an online business manager is a, someone that comes in alone beside you into your practice, into your business, and helps you to strategize, helps you to build systems, helps you to uh, pl make plans and execute them it, it they help to see holes in your in your business or in your practice um there are people or uh, myself uh that have been running businesses for a long time and one of the reasons that i love doing with this with therapists is because when they went to school, they went to school to get a degree in psychotherapy. And so most of them didn't get any business education. And so I get to come in and help them, teach them, help them to be accountable, um, watch their businesses grow. Um, and, and that includes, we, we do offer task oriented services for them as well, but really the main core is to help them grow their business and have a daily operation and flow that is, that is hopefully stress-free to the most part of it, and um, conducive to a place of just really unending growth. Its boundaries are really up to you. Oh, wow. Did you hear that, everybody? So what excites me about Frances's business is that when we met, it, it was quite unique, um, and she was offering something really powerful. So it, what I'd learned early on in my practice was that I can't be all things to all people all the time, as much as I would like to. I just, I, it's, just not humanly possible but it's also not smart for me and knowing what I know about myself and, and knowing that people like Francis existed and Francis wanted to help clinicians and, and really built a, a business around serving clinicians it, it was just to me it was like a match made in heaven it was like I want to help you grow <laughs> because we need therapists and clinicians all over the world and I know you don't just work with mental health clinicians you've got you've, you've worked with massage therapists and acupuncturists and dentists and like you've yeah, um, so I, being able to help us do our work so that all that other stuff gets done in a way that allows us to do our work, I just think is priceless. Yeah. But that's not what we're here about today. But if you want to call Frances, her details will be here because if you haven't got an online business manager, you probably need one. Anywho, so let me ask, how long has My Solution Services been in operating for? We are in our third and a half year. Um, I started in the early spring of 2014 and um, I, basically it was just me. It was me, my cell phone and my computer and my knowledge and my skills and expertise in the industry. Um, I, I wrote a guest blog and when it was um, published, 
um, in the first hour, I had five emails in my inbox. And I'm like, woo! <laughs> um, and so the first three weeks, I had three clients. And in the first three months, I had 10 clients. And then about month four, I went, hmm, I think I need help. <laughs> and so I had my first um, team member. Yeah. And it has just done nothing but continue to grow since then. I've been in mental health for about 12 years total. I was the director of an operation, a large counseling agency, and did handle the operations and the staff. I hired, I fired. At yeah. one point, I had about 26 therapists on staff that I oversaw. So I knew the industry, the business side. I did pretty much everything you can imagine except go in the room and do the therapy. Fantastic. So it's not like you just woke up one day and went, hmm, I think I'm going to do this. Let me work it out as I go. It's like, this is a need. People are hurting. Let me help fix that need. Fantastic. Yep. Okay. So how, what do you absolutely love about being in business for yourself? Um, well, selfishly, I get to wake up to no alarm. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. No alarms. <laughs> All right. Um, now that does mean that sometimes I wake up at 4.30 in the morning and sometimes I wake up at 8.30 in the morning. Um, but no, truly it gives, what I love about being an entrepreneur besides some of the little perks that you get, honestly, is I get to do the business my way. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the reasons I resigned my position and I started this is because I knew the gifts and skills that I had. And I also knew the needs of the therapist and I knew that each individual therapist was different. I tell them all the time, just like your DNA is different from every single person on the face of this earth, your practice is different from the guy down the street mm -hmm. or from your neighbor or whatever. Mm -hmm. And what you do, he may, it may not work for them. And that would be the same for how I serve the people. And so I literally try to customize the service as much as possible to the each individual clinician that I work with. So I love being able to do it my way. Yeah, great. And that means being flexible so I can do it for what their needs are and not what I think their needs are. Ooh, that's a powerful differentiation. Wow, that's cool. You, that, that's nice. I like the way that you kind of experienced this is the way it has to be done and this is the way you will do it. And then actually gone, I don't like that model of delivery. I'm going to do something that I know works better. And I know from our, our work together and talking together that your clients experience growth. So we know what you offer works. So what frustrates yeah. you about being in business for yourself? Oh, dare I say. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes, dear. <laughs> what frustrates me about being in business for myself? Um, I guess the frustration comes with uh, I want uh, I want to know that that everybody is being taken care of the way that I would take care of them, mm -hmm. the way that I work personally and individually. Um, even though there, there are our amazing people out in this world and we put them on our team, they do things different than we do. Hmm. Um, and so I have to learn to let go of that to an extent. I have to trust that the people that I bring on the team and how I train them will do their job to the best of their ability or even maybe sometimes better than I do. Um, but the frustration <laughs> is... <laughs> What a concept. Yeah. Um, so I guess the frustration is that, uh, you know, the typical entrepreneur, you know, you can't have your hands in every pot all the time, mm. all, although we want to. Mm. You know, I want to make sure every little single detail and every word and every call is handled the way that I would do it. And I can't. It's absolutely impossible. The frustration that I'm going to have to walk away at the night, at the end of the day, and there are some emails not answered. Um, you know, or projects that I want done and they're not done. Hmm. I mean, we make deadlines, yeah, but I have my own deadlines. So it's, I, it goes back to the self. We're harder on ourselves than we are, you know, on anybody else. The reason I decided to come 
is because it was basically a no-brainer for me. And what I mean by that, that's the bottom line. It, it, there was no other answer. It just made sense. And for me, um, the reason is because you and I had been working together already. Um, we started working together in June of 2016 officially. Now, I just would tell y'all a little shout out for Miss Joe is Joe and I met in January of 2016. And I really, when we met, it wasn't about, you know, coaching. It was about let's network and, and, and see what we can do to help each other. And the more that we talked, the more that I, I began to feel like, like, wow, there's something going on here. Because I had been looking for a business coach for about a year and a half, but I didn't want just any business coach. And, but I wasn't ready financially for a business coach. So from January of 2016 to June of 2016, you worked with me to help me get to a place to financially be able to bring you on officially mm -hmm. and nurtured that and gave me things to do and homework <laughs> and um it was amazing and so we got to officially start working in june of 2016. when i got to do that and i got to pay the first invoice it was a joy for me to be able to do that I mean, literally pure joy. And ever since then it has been. Because I saw the vision and the endless possibilities of what will happen in our working relationship. So when it came around to the mastermind, it was like, there was no, that's why I say it was a no-brainer. There was no other reason but to go. I mean, first of all, it was like, who get out of the office <laughs> my husband with me. and so we got to drive because it's a it's about a six or seven hour drive from where we are so we got to drive and have a great road trip which we love road trips um and uh, it, you know it was a bit skeptical in the beginning and the reason was because i was i knew that i was coming to this class that was going to be full of therapists and I was the only little duck there that wasn't a therapist and I am not normally intimidated I'm not easily intimidated I'm a very mentally sound person I'm very um, confident most of the time you know I, I I worked with therapists forever I I taught them I trained them I hired them I fired them but coming there was like oh crap and I knew that I was going to be the only one in there, not, you know, in that particular uh, professional role. So coming there was very exciting, very um, anticipating for me, very scary, um, and not sure what to expect. But I thought if I don't go, uh, I, I can't imagine what I'm going to miss out on and what's going to happen. I knew that I would walk away with something. And I knew that my business needed this. Wow. So I had to jump out on faith and get in the car and drive up to San Francisco. So that's why I showed up. Well, well, I'm grateful that you showed up. I think everybody else in the room that year was grateful that you showed up. So building expectations would have been difficult because you said that you didn't know what to expect. You just needed to go. So what did you walk away with? Did it? Did you get a result that was meaningful for you? <laughs> well, just a few. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. Slightly, yeah, just a few. Um, like I said, I was ready to take the business to the next level, but I didn't know what that looked like or what that meant. Um, I had my my confidence was in the work that I did my past experiences, my knowledge of the industry on the business side, but my own business and, and how to keep growing that without screwing it up mm. was what was tripping me up. Mm. That and it was already successful and, you know, not sabotaging that success. That was, that was really, you know, like, God, if I do something, I might screw it up. So maybe I should just not do it at all. 
Ooh, yeah. and stay where I am. Yes. Because I'm already successful. Yeah. So for me, you know, I, as I as I sat in the room, and by the way, like you know, morning of day two, it was like we were all old friends and I got over my, you know, little in in insecurities about being not being a therapist in the room. Um, but for me, you know, I sat there and I listened a lot. Not only did I listen to you, but I listened to the others and their stories and everybody was wanting to increase their client load their case load increase the revenue increase the you know grow the business which is obviously what you need to do when you go there get more clients but i didn't need that mm. and that was the one thing that i thought well what, what what's this going to do for me mm. i didn't need more clients in fact there were times where i had so many clients that i didn't know what to do with them yes. <laughs> Not, and that's a good and, you know, and um, I'm not complaining by any means. And I, I, have, I still have those moments that I work through them. But what I'm getting at is I didn't have to worry about how to get more clients or, you know, what is stopping me? You know, I don't have a problem talking to people. So, you know, it, it's no big deal. But what I saw that could get in the way is me sabotaging it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And being afraid of the success that was already happening. Wow. So when you said something earlier about, um, you know, doing things in our business that, that are just time suckers or not important, that's what I would do. Yeah. When I get overwhelmed or I get stressed, I start doing stupid stuff that doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't I know. know anyone else who does that. I don't either. I mean, I can't actually agree. Somebody, somebody out there does these, um, this is private practice videos, and, and they're really good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm awesome at finding busy work. I am excellent at finding busy work. Not necessarily useful, strategic, helpful work, but busy work, yeah. Queen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can, you know, I can make a mean, mean layout and spreadsheet, you know, <laughs> or I can, you know, sit and, and you know, f fix something because it's a little bit off in the way I look and yet nobody's going to see it but me. <laughs> Are you kidding me? But because everything is this way and it's not that way, I got to make it that way. So I would, I would stop. I would put the things aside that I knew would help to grow the business or that I needed to at least explore to grow the business. And I would start doing these mind numbing, no brighter things that I didn't have to think or step out and, and take that risk, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was, it was about learning that number one, I got to start delegating that stuff. And maybe it is stuff that needs to be done, but I don't need to be doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I, mine was a whole different kind of a feel yeah. in, in terms of, you know, yeah, I don't need to go out and get clients. I need to just get out of my own way. That's such a massive mind shift, isn't it? Such <laughs> a massive mind shift. Because everybody thinks that it's more clients, more clients, more clients. And then all, I, I know because I work, many people who come to me, the, the, the first statement isn't I need more clients. It's usually... I am so tired. I can't work this hard anymore. I've got to get out of my own way. Can you help me build this in a way that works for me? And I'm like, sure I can. And the, yeah. usually the first thing we do is I want you to book a holiday and that freaks everyone out. Um, oh, yeah. Still freaks you out. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and then it's like I actually have more work than I know what to do with, which is awesome, but it doesn't feel awesome. You feel it still helps, it still creates a sense of shame and failure, and like I'm not good enough. But because having more work and having more clients creates a whole new set of problems, and mm -hmm. just because you got your mind over the fact that I need to market and sell my services, yay, mindset tick, <laughs> you've now got the new challenge of now I need to get out of my own way. So mm -hmm. That was that was powerful. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. So the the event helped you start thinking around or expanding your thinking or challenging your thinking around how you could get out of your own way. 
Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I remember when when we first started working together, you asked me, what did I want in the future? What did I want the business to do for me? Hmm. And I remember telling you that w one of the things that besides being able to serve as many people as I possibly can at therapist is that I wanted to be able to have the freedom to go and see my granddaughter and my kids that are on the other side of the world whenever I wanted to. And we, uh, you know, it, she was born, Lily, my little granddaughter, was born in 2015, and she turned a year in 2016, and I remember just falling to pieces like three weeks before her birthday because I wasn't going to be there, mm -hmm. and having a conversation with you, and you're like, why, why wouldn't you be there? And I'm like, I can't, well, how could I be there, you know, do you have the money? Yeah well, what's the problem, <laughs> you know? Um, because I thought I had to stay here and do everything and do the business. Well, hello, my business is online. Pick it up and take it with you, you know? <laughs> so I bought a ticket and I went and stayed in Germany for a month. Yeah. And I wouldn't have been able to do that in the past. Hmm. So it allowed me to start shifting the mindset of the way my not only get out of my way but to be able to live a life that was different from what i've ever done before mm -hmm. and that because of the success and because of building a team that i can depend and rely upon i can take my business and go across the world and still do what i need to do and yet be with my granddaughter and be there on her first birthday party. Um, so I think that, that it helped me getting out of the way in, in realizing that you can't control everything, but what you can control is setting up, you know, the people, trusting the people on your team, trusting the flow of the business, trusting that, you know, it, it whatever I'm do, work I'm doing with you mm. and implementing it, it's going to work and I can do these things I don't know if that makes sense I feel like I'm rambling no well, I think what's really powerful for me listening to this and I just want to reflect it back so in case other people are like my god Francis is so successful I can never be like Francis you, you can um so we'll just put it there uh, Francis is awesome but you know she just does what she's told to do essentially except homework except homework <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay we got around that too because we're just that clever um you didn't wait until you achieved your somewhere out there definition of what success needed to look like before you could start having those freedoms you you actually and that, this is the, the mistake want, want of a better word that people make all the time is that it's like i i need to I can go and visit my granddaughter or I can go and live on the beach or I can have that laptop lifestyle when I deserve it or when everything else is done or when I've achieved some nebulous undefined thing called success. And what we were able to show in you just picking yourself up and going to Germany was this is what you said you wanted your business to do for you. Why are you not letting it do it for you? And yeah. I still remember the whole, I think we had that conversation on a Monday or a Tuesday, my time, by, by, by Saturday, my time, it was like, Joe, my ticket's booked, I'm leaving on this day, we need to change our appointments. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> she listened, she did. Yeah. So, <laughs> we might not do the written homework, but buying plane tickets to Germany, we certainly did. <laughs> so yep, yep, yep. I think one part of the mindset for success that I try and impart to everybody is when you define what success is going to look like for you, so for Francis, it was having the flexibility and freedom to be able to get up and go to Germany from the US to visit with her granddaughter. We need to be doing things in our business that give us that sense every single day. So not being chained to your desk, not being chained to your tasks, but actually going, what do I need to do to create it so I can just pick up and go? So I can just go over here. So people will often ask me, Joe, you're always on holidays. Yeah, I take a week off every three months and you're almost there, which is really close. Cool. You're very close. Um, because if I don't, I'm not a very nice person. But I have created my business to, it's a life by design. It's like I, I know that I need it and I want it. So I'm going to take it. Because exactly. I can, yeah. Yeah. 
All right, so one of the modules that we talked about in the um, Success Mindset Masterclass was on um, identifying um, your personal risks and triggers. And I think you've already given us some insight into that. But uh, were you aware of what your risks and triggers were before you came along? Did you have a sense of what they could have been? Um, kind of yes and no. Um, the third day, now I want to ruin the secret for everybody, but the third day, <laughs> I thought, what the heck am I going to talk about, you know? But I realized that um, I'm, I'm, one of the, it, it, I'm one of those people that I have a tenaciousness about me, and I will sit here in this office from anywhere from eight to ten hours, and I'll get up and I'll go to the bathroom. And I'll get up and I'll get something to eat and then I'll get something to drink and then I'll get up and go to the bathroom again. But I'm, it's, I, I just, I mean, and I bring my sandwich here and I'm, and I'm working, 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 working. And I'm like literally, you know, my face is in this, this computer all day, every day. And I forget about me. And um, so you know, for, for, for one of the things is, is literally getting up and getting away, walking away, you know, whether it's going outside and sitting on the deck or sitting on the patio and having lunch, or maybe I just want to go take a nap because I'm picking tired, you know, or sleepy. Um, maybe I need to go out and have lunch with somebody, you know. Um, maybe I... You know, somebody's here, a friend is here in town, or my sister comes in town, and I want to take the day off and take her to lunch. Um, occasionally, that's mm -hmm. things that I'll do, but on a regular daily basis, no. So, you know, my, my trigger is, is, is I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to get it done, and I'm going to do what i got to do, and I'm going to answer almost every single email that I possibly can answer, and I'm going to do this task, and... Um, I will just, you know, and then also, again, going back to um, doing the things that aren't necessary or important. So those were kind of my triggers, which some of them I knew, some of them I, some of them I didn't, and some of them got pulled out for me. Um, the, I, what, I, what I noticed is after the mastermind is being in the group, and the accountability with the people that you were in the room with, that you created a relationship with, that now know all of your hidden poo, um, and um, every you know every then that and everything else under the sun, um, and then you know the coaching with you, the accountability is slowly starting to change that you know that process, that habit, that trigger for you. Um, I still struggle with it. But now I'm way more aware of it than I ever was, yeah. Yeah. you know, until so it's like all of a sudden, why is my back hurting? You know, oh, yeah, you didn't get up today. Yes. <laughs> so um, for me, it, it was really, I think that it was more about self-care than anything. Wow. Um, which I, I think that if I recall in that room, everybody touched on that. Yes, I did. Yeah. You know, it's the self care. But part of part of what I grew up with is part of what gives me the um, work ethic that I have, and and the and the heart and the deliverance to serve and to do above and beyond is also part of what gets me in trouble with the self care. Yes. So. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, and it is. It's real. And for those of us who who are built to serve and are called to serve, um, it's not just a job. We those, those people who do this sort of work, whether you're a serving therapist or you are a therapist or you're a health professional, it, it, it's not a transactional process. You 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 are invested in your clients as much as they're invested in themselves. Sometimes we're over invested in our in our clients. So yeah. understanding how to take care of yourself in the moment, in the day-to-day -day activities, um, knowing that you need to get up and move around, knowing that drinking lots of water is important and knowing when to, to go and have a nap is really important. 
Because mm-hmm. what, what I had noticed, if it, I hope it's okay to say this with, with you, is as you got increasingly fatigued, as you got more stressed and felt more out of control, you actually just did more stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just <laughs> did more and did more. And all of a sudden my inbox was full of yet another project and yet another thing we were doing and yet another thing we were doing. And I was struggling to keep up. So and like, there's this massive ocean between us. So um, helping, I think that the day I said to you, we're just going to stop and we're going to finish one thing and, and actually helped you settle into just one thing it was really uncomfortable and it, yeah. was, it wasn't pleasant, but we did it. And then it, it's, it's kind of just been like, yep, when are we putting it on the timeline, Joe? When are we going to put that on the timeline, Joe? And, and even so much now where you'll go, it's a great project. We'll think about that in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because it's not a time, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's really powerful. So understanding your wrists and triggers is about I, I want to feel like all the tasks are done. I want to feel in control of all the tasks. And I will just keep working until the tasks are done because mm-hmm. I want to know that I'm serving my clients with excellence. I want to know that I'm serving my team members with excellence. I want to be responsible for the resources that I have. I'm paraphrasing you now because I know you. Um, but the person who gets lost in that is Francis becomes a machine. Yeah. And then my poor little furry um, puppy and my husband suffer from that. Well, me too, of course. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just dragging my butt into the kitchen and barely making it, you yeah. know. Yeah, it's, it's not nice when they reflect that back to us, is it? I, I call it giving my family my leftovers. Well, yeah, that's what Raleigh tells me all the time. Yeah. So and when, I get the leftovers. Yeah, yeah. And, and it wasn't until I start, I, I really understood. I probably was sitting there looking at a plate of leftovers going, I don't want to be this. <laughs> <laughs> It's not very funny. <laughs> no, it's, that, that's not very appetizing. That, that, no. That's where the shift happened to me. So yes. the last 12 months has been pretty significant for you. I'm just going to... We'll <laughs> so you... you um, can, can you share with us how you recruit for your phone schedulers? Can you share with us? Because I love this and I think the world needs to know. Please. Yeah, and it, it was actually a part of what um, what I feel the success has been because there's a lot of success since Mind's uh, Mastermind that I, I want to share quickly too. But um, uh, one of the things I think that I, I have a twofold, you know, I've got the clients that, uh, that I serve and i got to bring those on, but then I've got a team that i got to build to be able to serve those clients. And so I have two different worlds going of I'm doing consults, I'm bringing on clients, we're serving clients, but now i got to find, i got to look for, i got to find, i got to hire team members, i got to train them, i got to get them up and running. Mm-hmm. And probably in um, 2016, one of my I, I, I know that you can remember it was one of my biggest, it was like, oh my God, again, was trying to find team members and good quality team members that will do the way, the kind of work that I want, that has the kind of worth ethics that I have, that has the kind of, you know, they're not flaky flakes and crazy ass people. Did I say that? Right. Did you? Um, Safe place. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, I had them and I got rid of them because it was like, oh my God, hell no. So um, my daughter-in-law um, is um, a military spouse. My son is in the military. They're stationed in Germany. So I've watched it. And my younger son was in the military too. So I've been in uh, uh, the kind of military world since 2003. And I watched... You know, every three years, them have to pick up their life and move. Mm -hmm. And putting down roots is just not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. And occasionally, she would ask me, hey, mom, you know, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? And I thought about it, you know, whatever. And so one day, she brought it up again. She says, mom, have you thought about looking for team members in military spouses? She goes, I have this really great connection. And I'm like, okay, let me look at it. So she sends me the connection, the website. And I go and I look at it and I think, hmm, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And so 
uh, there was just a quick little application for employers looking for people. And I filled it out. They contacted me immediately. Um, we emailed back and forth and told her what I did, what I was looking for, and it was going to be an ongoing, consistent thing. And before I know it, I'm in, and I'm getting resumes like crazy. Mm. And these are all military spouses from all over the states. Mm. And I'm just going, holy moly. And they're degreed. They've got, you know, experience here and there. Um, some of them have, you know, B AAs, BAs, couple masters. Some of them have, uh, you know, worked in either psychology or in a mental health capacity somehow. Some have it, but they've been customer service, you know, heavily oriented customer service or phone work or whatever. And I just was like, wow. I mean, I was literally, I think my, my first batch was like six resumes all at one time. And I'm just going, oh, my God. So what I did was I asked them to, I responded and I asked them to send me a two-minute video about why would they want to work with me. And as they started coming back in, I was just sitting here blown away. I'd shoot them to Joe and she'd go, or, <laughs> and, um, Long story short, I've hired 13 military spouses since the beginning of this year. Wow. I just think that's incredible. I think we, I love this story. I love it so much. <laughs> and they are amazing. I've lost a couple for either medical or emergency purposes, but they are amazing. And it doesn't matter if they stay in the States, they can pick up and take their work wherever they yeah. go. Yeah. And I, I've just been blessed above and beyond with amazing people in, in the relationship that I have. It's called America's Career Force. And it was started by the wife of, I think, like a captain or something like that, wanting to help military spouses build careers. Mm -hmm. And the online world is perfect. Yeah. I'm not yet international. But I have a feeling in the future <clears throat> that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I showed you the possibility of that the other day. It was like, poof. <laughs> Not only for the business, but for them yes. that are, you know, uh, uh, serving um, overseas, such as, you know. Uh, well, my daughter is in my IT department. She runs my IT department, and she does it from Germany. Mm -hmm. And so it's just been, it's part of what has allowed the success. Now, let me take that back to, okay. after the mastermind came home, uh, and we were driving home. So we're driving on the way home, and we're talking about it. I'm pumped, okay? I'm just like so full and ready to go. I'm full. I have equipped you know, things that I need. I'm excited. I'm just ready to go. Okay, let's jump because I'm ready. So we're talking, you know, we've got a seven hour drive and I've got a zero. So um, I told him, I said, you know, okay, uh, here's where I am. I think, at the, I think at that point I had maybe two schedulers mm -hmm. and um, I'm like, by a three to five year period, I'm going to have 10 schedulers on staff. I'm going to have assistants. I'm going to have a biller. Are you there? Okay. We lost you. Okay. So you're in the car and you're driving home. <laughs> and okay, you said, so I'm going to have 10 billers. Uh, no, okay. So billers, schedulers. schedulers. Phone schedulers. <laughs> Not 10 oh, billers. There you go. <laughs> God, no. Um, so I told him I'm going to have 10 schedulers. I'm going to have, you know, a, at least one or two admin people. I want a project manager. I'm going to have a biller. I'm going to have whatever I need. It's going to be great. We're going to have this, you know, huge thing. And he's like, okay. Now I have to be careful what I say to him because he's going to remember. And when that time comes, he's going to go, he'll just expect it to be. Yeah. And so he's like, okay, but now we should look at the, short-term, mid-term, long-term, Mr. Analytical, you know, engineering type mind. Um, I love him to death. Like him. <laughs> yes. Um, and by March of this year, yep. I had 10 schedulers. <laughs> Seven months later, I had 10 schedulers. 
by the end of 2016, I had more than doubled the revenue and hit six figures in three year period. Holy crap. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I sat here and stared at my computer when I pulled up my profit and loss for 2016 because I was busy working. Mm. And I called my accountant and I said, is this true? And he's like, yeah, I've been telling you. Are you sure? Are you absolutely sure this is true? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. I'm like, so seven months after the mastermind, I had far surpassed my goal for three to five year period. Yep. So I have no boundaries at this point. No, and that's that's what's so exciting is like you just your vision it, it it it's your vision is going to fill the void that's created by I've already achieved that. So what else can we do? I've already achieved that. So what else can we do? And it's not. I, I remember your first goal for me, Joe, and I went. <laughs> How am I going to do that? Mm. And yeah. where are we now? We're like we, 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 three we, times we, that, yeah. four times that. I don't know. You know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just kept creeping it up there, and yeah, and yes, that's been very, very exciting, exciting to watch. And I think that the passion for for me that gets so exciting is it, it's fun for us as business owners to achieve the figures. Like we're not let's not lie about that. The the numbers is fun. But what really drives us is knowing that it's done because we're serving and we're serving from a place of excellence. And that's something that I continue to look to you for is Frances always turns up. She, even if it's a crappy, horrible day because we both have them, she'll turn up and she'll be prepared and she'll know what it is that she, she needs to do um, or ask for. And I think, you know, it makes me want to make sure that I turn up and that I'm prepared and that I have something to give. So it's, it's I, 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 I love what you said earlier. You said it, it, it's about the, the pursuit of excellence or the commitment to excellence. Mm -hmm. and that, that sets you apart quite significantly. It's like, don't, it's not a transaction. It's not, I do this, therefore I get paid this, therefore you will be satisfied. It's I actually want to partner with you. I think you use that in your marketing language. I, I want to come alongside and partner with you. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, when I ask, when I do my consults and I ask therapists how they heard about me and they're mm -hmm. like, oh, my God, you have this huge, great reputation. I'm like, really? <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, um, you know, I do things a little bit out of the norm. One of the first things I ask him in the consult is, tell me who you are. Don't tell me who you are as a therapist. Yeah. You know, I want to know outside the room, outside the career, outside your degree, who are you? Because I want to know people. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we build our relationships, then they're going to build our business. Uh, that's power. We could leave it right there. We could. <laughs> and ask one more question. One more question. Because yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for coffee. Um, all right. So what is the number one thing that you think Everyone who is in business for themselves needs to know. God, only one? Yeah, just the number one thing. The one thing. Right now, what is the one thing? If, they, if people come to you and they want to be successful and they're in business for themselves, what is the one thing they need to know? I'm, I'm, I have three things that are literally at the top. Number one, self-care. Mm -hmm. nice. I already know that I struggle with that because yeah. if we're not here, you know, we've all heard you are your business's biggest asset. And if you're not here, you're not able to serve. And so that's what helps me to keep even little by little mm -hmm. doing the th change, things that change. I've got a long, long way to go. Yeah. Number two is I feel that relationships are critical. If you don't build a relationship and you don't come in a place of serving others, that it's it's not going to be what it should be. It's not going to be what it's truly meant to be. Because I believe that, you know, we're called to love, we're called to serve. And when we do that, it just explodes and blossoms. And number three, be flexible. Be kind to yourself and be flexible. The business will always be in a morph. Yes. Always. Yeah. <laughs>
Always. Always. You're never going to have your ducks in a row. Sorry, you <laughs> <eight> people. <laughs> No, we're trying to put kittens in a box. Yeah. <laughs> Not ducks in a row, kittens in a box. <laughs> kittens in a box. They're all going to come out every yeah. single time. That's right. Oh, Francis, this is wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing with everybody and um, sharing with the broader community on, on how cultivating a mindset for success actually practically plays out in, in a great business model with somebody who's really passionate about what they do. So if you've watched this video today and you want to know some more, please get in touch with me. There'll be contact details at the bottom of the video and I'm looking forward to sharing with you further. Thank you again, Francis.